So I'm ready to jump in and continue the cleanup of this Model 4. In a previous video we removed all the keycaps and I've had those uh, soaking in soapy water. They've actually been soaking for a couple of days because I didn't have time to get back to the project. But what I wanted to tackle next was the backing plate here around all the key switches uh, and get it cleaned up. And the first thing I'm going to do is just take a soft brush and I'm just going to brush out of here what I can. I don't expect much to come out, honestly. But, but it's a good place to start. Uh, something to take note of is the little metal bar here. Make sure I've got, hopefully, focus on there. This little metal bar it uh, sits underneath the space bar. And what it's designed to do is if I push the space bar on this end, it'll push the metal bar down on this piece uh, this other side will drag the space bar down with it and it keeps the space bar moving up and down easily. This would unclip out from one of these little plastic clips here. Make it a little bit easier to clean. The problem is, is I broke one of these little clips off once before and had to find a replacement. So I'm just going to leave that little bar in place as you see and I'm just going to continue to just kind of brush. Get as much out of here as I can just with a soft brush. And then I'll go a little deeper cleaning. The brushing's actually helped. I can see uh, that it's actually removed a fair amount of stuff. There was a lot of lint and dirt caught around this metal bar. And actually that's uh, cleaned off. You can hear Rosie in the background, as you usually can. So next, I have a double-ended toothbrush here. This is actually a toothbrush for uh, brushing dog's teeth. I like it because it's got the small side here. It's soft but not too soft. Are you coming to help Rosie? Are you coming to help? Uh, on the larger end, but the small end here of this is good for getting down into these little areas. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a scrub dry here. Just to, once again kind of break anything that I can knock loose. Part of why I'm doing this dry is I want to knock as or knock as much of the lint and surface dirt and stuff off and then I'll brush it out of there before I actually take a little alcohol to this and do a final cleaning. And that way the alcohol is not washing down around the key bodies into the assembly. Just help keep the PC board underneath a little bit cleaner. So I'll work my way through here and just give these a Nice light surface scrub. You know, this is a process I've kind of evolved over time. I'm sure other people have a different process. Uh, my little process here has served me well over the years. And just seeing how well this is cleaning up dry here, I'm not going to need a lot of alcohol, you know, to knock everything out of here. Come back around to the large brush and just kind of knock that off. Just with this light brushing, it already looks a lot better. I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera. I'm actually debating here whether I even need to do a little bit of alcohol cleaning in there. This would be a little easier if I didn't have the keyboard in the unit. The keyboard cable here is permanently attached and winds its way through and is kind of a pain to, to remove, which is why I haven't done it. If you're going to use some alcohol, this is isopril alcohol. It is electronic cleaner and that's because it's 99.9% .9 ultra pure. Uh, it's got a moderate evaporation rate, which gives you a little bit longer working time. A regular store-bought alcohol, like you'd use to you know, clean a wound, uh, isn't as pure and can leave those impurities behind. Uh, this wasn't that expensive. I've had this for years, and you can see I've used about that much of it. Uh, it's just great for, for this kind of stuff because you know it's going to leave a clean surface. If you're going to use the alcohol, just as it says here, uh, vapor is harmful, irritant eye, skin, and respiratory, respiratory tract. 
using a well ventilated area. Read the directions, although none of us actually do. Uh, dilute, dilute prior to use due to a consumer product regulation, users and blah, 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 blah. And of course, I'm sure the state I'm in here is listed, although it actually isn't. Should dilute at 25% by mass with water or non-VOC solvent like acetone prior to use. So that brings us around to the word acetone. Acetone attacks plastic. Uh, it will dissolve plastic. I would not get acetone near this keyboard. These are plastic switch bodies. They're plastic plungers. Uh, fluid can get around that plunger down into the body of the switch. I wouldn't want to get acetone anywhere near these. Uh, if it got down between the plunger and the switch body, I'm sure it would mess up the switch inside. It, it would, would attack and damage. Uh, these clip down into the metal plate. It could attack and damage those. Keep acetone away from plastic. If you're in, you know, going to use acetone, if I was going to try acetone on the case, I would try to clean a little spot here inside just to see how the acetone attacks the plastic. My experience has been that acetone pretty much always attacks plastic uh, in old computers. Uh, I've actually made the mistake a couple times of just going straight to acetone and messing something up. I'll get myself a little shot of alcohol here. I don't need a lot. already smell it. A little bit on the brush and I will just just drag through there and see if we're cleaning anything off. I don't know that we're actually getting anything but while I've got the keyboard open I might as well. And it shouldn't take a lot of scrubbing. At this point, what I'm doing is really cosmetic. Uh, having dirt down in here is not going to affect the function of the keyboard uh, in this place. You can see that, I don't know if you can see it or not on camera, but capillary effect does draw the alcohol up underneath between the, the key switch body and the metal backing plate. Uh, there's no reason to worry about that. It's going to evaporate out if a little bit got down into the switch body. It wouldn't hurt it. And that would also uh, evaporate out. So really I'm just cleaning here around where the key cap gaps are and where dirt can get down in. And I'm just lightly rinsing in the alcohol here. And I'll work my way through the diagonals here. Like I say, in this case, I really don't think this was necessary, but uh, I can be a little, I uh, don't want to say anal about this, but a little bit, uh, Somebody, some people might call me a little OCD about the ritual here, maybe, maybe not. It just might as well do it while I've got it open. It takes just a minute or two. And you can already, if you're watching, see where the alcohol I've used is cleaned off. I'm not really seeing anything that the brush is picking up. Okay, this is probably a wasted effort. But I'll know I did it and know I gave the computer her a little love. Uh, getting him or her, depending on your thoughts or it, a little bit of attention. And we've pretty much worked our way around. I don't really see any physical difference. Uh, quick comment, often there might be a little silicon lube down between the metal bar and the plastic housing here. I'm just I'm not gonna get the alcohol in there if there is and disturb that. There's no reason to disturb it. As you can see, that's already dried off. Uh, another note, don't take the alcohol and pour it back into the bottle. 
if I've picked up surface contaminants and when I've re-wetted the brush, gotten those into the alcohol, I don't want to contaminate the bottle of alcohol. And of course, I got way more here in the little dish than I needed to. I don't really see anything else uh, compared to what that looked like when I started. That's actually cleaned up very nice. There was just a, a film of dirt and crud down on the metal backing plate between all of these. Uh, that seems to have cleaned up pretty well. There's a little bit of marking there that, where the alcohol is dried off. Uh, you know, for me, I'm I'm happy with that. I know I've made the effort. I can see that the dirt and gunge and stuff that was down in there has come off. Uh, apparently it wasn't oily or greasy. Uh, I did rebuild a keyboard that came out of probably an auto shop. I wasn't sure. They just had a film of oil kind of everywhere. Uh, and was difficult and nasty to clean. Uh, it turned the brush and the alcohol black as, as I cleaned that out. I did get that keyboard working. Anyhow, there's the next step uh, in moving this forward. A little safety comment here. Move the camera. It is a Model 4. The main power switch is sitting right here. The leads are exposed. Make sure it's unplugged when you work inside of the machine. Only plug it in when you need to actually have it plugged in. If this had been plugged in during this, uh, probably the brown, well, one of the brown and one of the blue wires would have been hot. It's a double pole, in this case, double throw switch. So it switches both the neutral and the hot. The two of those terminals would have been hot and it would have been really easy here to shock myself on that. If you're working inside of the case and don't need the computer turned on, you unplug it. Those kind of little details matter and they're good habits to form. I will bring down uh, my little bottle of deoxit and I will give the potentiometers over here a spritz uh, and work them, although they seem to work fine when I had it powered up. Uh, something else just of note here is I do have the cable that runs off to the monitor board and the ground removed here so the CRT is isolated the only reason I've done that is just strain relief on the cable I could move this around as I need to and I'm not stressing those connections uh, they're easy to take off and put on I'm just looking at the, the, the shrink tube job there on Wow, that's really ugly. Uh, it is factory. Let's see if I can get zoomed in here where you can see this. You can just see the shield in there. It's kind of just a wad of shielding off the wires all kind of wrapped together and soldered and attached to a ground. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little bit ugly. Sorry, it keeps moving out of the uh, view of the camera. So, we've definitely, as I always do, gone off on a tangent here from cleaning a keyboard to looking at internal cabling. Anyhow, I think that takes care of this step. We'll move on to the keycaps next. So I've got the uh, dish here. It's all the keycaps I pulled off. I said these soaked for a couple of days. Uh, started out in hot, soapy water. I've rinsed them a few times as they've soaked. Uh, it took a lot longer to get back. To finishing these up than I had intended, but that's the nature of having a day job. Uh, I've poured the water out. I used tap water for this. Uh, some might argue that I should have used uh, distilled water. Uh, my water is not that hard. There's not that much uh, mineral in it. Uh, for me personally, using tap water is fine. These were really dirty before I soaked them. There was a, a ring around all the sides. I don't think I've got a photo of it. Just from sitting, they were just dirty and just the soak has knocked the vast majority of that off. And all I'm going to do at this point is just pull a keycap out. 
wipe off the sides, wipe off the face, give it a visual. Uh, tap some of the water out and I always take and just using my breath try to blow some dry air well I can't call it dry but just through my lips just blow a shot of uh, air in there just to knock any remaining water out <sniffs> like that and then I just sit them down to dry and let them dry for a period of time I uh, guess you can't really see the keycap sitting back there to dry I won't, I won't bore you with the half hour this is going to take. Now we can see on the four key here. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. Oh, didn't mean to zoom there. There's still little flecks of white paint that I believe is the paste paint or paste spray, spray paint overspray that occurred around this keyboard at some point you know some of this I've been able to just knock off with a fingernail I've actually knocked two of those off but just a fingernail I'd hate to use anything sharper than that uh, because this surface with the four in it is is rough it's not smooth like the edges I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that little dot of paint out of either of those but you know that is what it is uh, I do give these time to dry using this method. I want the water to evaporate out so that when I put them back on and press them down, I'm not squeezing water out of the, the hole here. Of course, it's not focusing. I'm not squeezing trapped water out of the hole, out and having it run down and into the switch body. We don't want water down in there, obviously. Uh, where alcohol getting in there would evaporate out pretty quickly, water getting down on the key switch basically won't. Uh, I actually watched uh, a restoration video recently where the guy took the keyboard, this part, and uh, directly in water. Uh, I don't recall, but I almost think it went through a cycle in a dishwasher. And you know it looked nice when he was done and he plugged it back into the computer and the keyboard didn't work. And he putzed and putzed and didn't seem to understand what he'd actually done and the key switches I'm sure were full of water. And water, you know, tap water is conductive. Uh, a distilled water tends to not be, it doesn't have minerals in it or salts which make it conductive. Uh, if you're bored sometime and want to do a little experiment and have a decent low ohm or de a decent ohm meter, measure the resistance from tap water and then stir some salt in and you will see the resistance come down. Uh, I believe the salt's ionic, it will conduct a charge. So, again, I don't want water getting down into the key or the key switches. paper towel is getting wet here. Of course it is. These are wet. I really want to wipe them down before the water on the bodies evaporates. That way I won't have scale or any kind of residue left behind. Uh, reinforce what I said earlier. Gee, there's some paint on there. I'll grab some paint thinner or acetone and clean that off. Oh crud, I just melted the keycap. Uh, if you're going to try harsh chemicals, touch them someplace inside where you're not going to damage anything visible. And be careful or heed my warning and just don't do it. So anyhow, I'll shut up at this point and keep chugging away with these. And we'll get them back on the keyboard here shortly. Well, we're chugging away here. Every few keycaps, the paper towel becomes wet enough. Well, I just watched that keycap scurry across the floor. I can see where it's at. I'll go retrieve it here in a second. 
every few keycaps, I don't know how many, the paper towel becomes moist and I just get a fresh one. I will keep chugging along here. Some of these I just, I can shake a large amount of water out of when I retrieve it from the bowl. It's, it was sitting in there upside down. Typically I will also turn these over at some point uh, and leave them you know, sitting on the face uh, just to help any evaporation uh, to occur with these sitting of course upside down here. There's not really air moving inside of the key body but I am giving gravity a chance to give me an assist and pull water out. Capillary effect will of course hold water back up inside of there especially in the little little plus sign shaped slot that the uh, plunger goes into for a lot of these those little specks of white paint have come off for some they haven't but I'll take it so there you have it all the keycaps have been uh, kind of wiped off uh, the water blown out of the body. Oops, camera stopped there. Anyhow, the bodies have been cleaned out as best I can. They've been wiped down. I've, I don't know if I can get the camera to not swing. I've used my thumbnail to clean off as much of the little bits of spray paint or on these as I could. I'm sure I've missed a bit. When I go to put them on, I will try again the D key here. Actually, still has a fair amount of paint over spray on it. I don't know if I can actually get that off. Little bits on the sides. This one was pretty bad. Some of them have knocked loose, some haven't. I'd like to get that one out of there. Oh, there it went. So, a little bit of persistence. I would use nothing harsher, as I said before, than a thumbnail on these. That actually helped a lot. That got that big spot off. Uh, a comment about the space bar, just so it's said, is these little nylon inserts here are what engage back here with the metal bar back on the keyboard. You, uh, They do come loose. You don't want to lose them. You want to pay attention. Uh, they will vanish in water. It'd be a little hard to see, especially in a white sink. You don't want to pour them down a drain. Uh, just a little tip. I speak from experience. I think some people might be tempted to retro bright the white keys to get them back to that bright white. That at least in the photographs I've seen seem to be uh, common. I'm not going to do that. I haven't actually retro brighted anything. I haven't felt the need at this point. I'm sure sooner or later it'll happen. Anyhow, I'm going to let these just sit for a while and we'll get them back on the machine. So I've got the bezel here. And sadly, uh, I can't get the little flex, flicks or the little spots of the white spray paint over spray off of this. It's a textured surface. It's fairly rough. And, you know, I've tried a few things and they're just not going to come off. I could potentially repaint the bezel black. If the weather outside was nicer, I might actually do that. Uh, but at this point, I'm just going to accept it the way it is. Uh, with the keycaps, the sides are, of course, very smooth. And there's a little bit of texture on the face. But most of the little, uh, again, white paint dots I've been able to remove. With this, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, I'm struggling a bit here for space. I've got the uh, 64K badge here, which I removed before I started cleaning and we'll go ahead and put it back on give the uh, little wire retainers actually they'll just fold over this one on top here has gotten rather weak but that'll hold the badge on just fine and I'm going to go ahead and put the bezel in place and screw it down before I put the keycaps back on. So I'll do that next. 
actually before I put the bezel back on I'm gonna get the space bar back on the little white clips here need to catch around these end posts and this can be a little bit tricky to do it's a little bit fiddly well, I've got one side but I can't quite get the other side to there it is. Well, there it was. Of course, this is always the... Does the space bar go on this way? It must go on that way. I didn't take photos like I probably should have. To remember which orientation this goes on. There it is. So you can see here that when I push on the one side, the little wire bar rotates and pulls down the other side, and that way it doesn't rock when you press it. And doing that before I set the bezel in place gave me some additional clearance in here to make it a little easier to do. I'm going to follow the same procedure I've described before where once the screws in the hole I turn it backwards until I feel it drop down and engage in the threads that way I'm not stripping out the hole I'm re-engaging the screw into the same threads as before hopefully you saw that where as I rotated it was a little click and the screwdriver dropped just a little bit down into the hole There it was. Idea, as I've said before, again, is to engage the threads that were cut originally when the screw was turned in. There it is. Since the uh, threads are not molded in, they are cut the first time the screw is put in place. I also didn't actually keep a good inventory of what screws went where. Excuse my reach. Reach around the camera here. I actually felt that one drop right in. And they should be really no more than finger tight turning to get them to drop down in because you're not cutting new threads. just using light finger pressure on the screwdriver okay this one's a little tighter than I would have liked the bezels in place and we're looking pretty good uh, I can tell that screw there isn't quite down tight these don't need to be overly tight just firm again if you over tighten them you take the risk of stripping the threads out down inside of the little plastic standoff that they turn down into. And there we've got it. You can, of course, see, even on camera here, very easily the little white flex. Some, like I say, at some point I may come back, tear this down again, and paint it. Undecided, anyhow. There's the next step in our reassembly. So I'm going to go ahead and give each one of the control potentiometers for the monitor over here a shot of deoxit. <laughs> Zoom in here a bit and just point something out. These potentiometers are mounted with the slot where the little phenolic board comes through up, which allows dust to fall down in and make the pots dirty. It's always, if, if you're doing this yourself, better to mount these down. Helps keep dust and dirt out. At the same time, it's easier to work on with the posts up. So from a manufacturing standpoint, this was probably easier. But as I mentioned, uh, with them down helps to keep them a little cleaner. I'll give each one of these just a little shot. 
if I can get lined up in there and just rotate it a few times I can actually see now that I'm moving in a little bit of lint there it was moving around as I turned it so we'll just give this a shot a little shot down into this one The deoxid, of course, helps clean off the uh, carbon track inside that the wiper rides on and lubricates things a bit. And again, that should be fine. So, with those cleaned, I think the next step is to move on to uh, Rosie. You and your tapping toenails is to move on to... Uh, getting the keycaps on. Rosie, go lay down. down. I'm trying to work. Get the computer plugged in. Oh, apparently I had the uh, power switch in the on position. Hopefully the monitor will warm up here. And I can adjust it. Okay, there's a raster. There it is. So the approach I'm going to take is basically to be able to pick up a key, poke around about where the key is on the M is right here, and just attach the key just like that. We have the three, which is going to be the numeric keypad over here. The nine, the numeric keypad, although I believe that was actually six now that I see it on there. Didn't pay, pay enough. I uh, didn't pay enough attention to the uh, layout of the key, Rosie. Please go lay down. No, maybe that is the nine. Well, I'm going to hold off on that. Zero is going to be up here. This is the small ender, which is right here. Seven. Shift equal. Zero, which I believe is right here. zero right there I'm trying to remember where backspace is and I don't remember four will be here anyhow I'm just gonna keep working through this this way and get all the keycaps on uh, sorry you can't see the monitor but I'm actually kind of hitting around until I find the proper key to get them back on Z is down here, and I've got the key on upside down, I believe. Of course, that may have been actually the W key. Well, anyhow, I'll keep working through this, and we'll be back. So I'm making progress, as you can see. There's seven. Five 
is on the numeric keypad over here. There's six. Uh, it's funny, I can type, but when I'm sitting here thinking about it, the keys go, it, I have to actually think a bit about it. Why do I seem to be short a couple of keys? Ooh, that doesn't thrill me. There's the so let's see, one of these is the nine, one of these is the six. So yeah, that's the six. That makes that the nine. Uh wow, I to be missing a keycap, which is a complete mystery. I did retrieve the one that fell on the floor. Oh, there it is. It was hiding in plain sight. I will have to sort the cursor keys out. So this is control here. So control M gives me a carriage return. Ah, this is decimal point. But I believe it's going to go right here, like so. Now with the cursor keys, it's kind of a matter of figuring out orientation. So that looks like the down arrow. I'm just looking at the actually that seems wrong. There's caps lock right there. Okay, so, yep. Now it really is just a matter of sorting out the uh, cursor keys. I'm a little bit confused here. These two have to be these two. Not really these be these two guys, and they seem wrong to me. I mean that definitely doesn't sit in the correct orientation. This is really kind of odd. It's gotta be it's got to be that one, meaning this one has to be, and boy does that seem wrong. Hmm. Interesting, I'm not quite sure. Uh, let the camera back up.
key just does not seem right there. And of course, here's the advantage of having one of these key pullers, is I can easily get him back out of there. You know, the, the flat to the front, the slope to the back, those three have to be correct. like those two are the same physical layout. I don't honestly know if that other cursor key is supposed to uh, I didn't pay that much attention when I removed them. If I look at them side by side, they are identical. They don't make sense with the side cursor keys. It really must. Where these are sloping away, this is sloping up, but that just must be how, that just must be the proper orientation. I just never noticed that before, so. There we are, we have keycaps back on the machine. If I can get the, uh, I know the focus jumbles around when I set the set screw here, I apologize. So, looks to me like we've got it back together. I can see a couple more paint spots on keys I'm going to try to rub off. But besides that, we have a clean keyboard. We have a clean machine. Boy, that seems... Did I do that at some point? Not realize I'd done it. I don't remember that scratch being there before. Uh, sorry if the uh, wheezing got caught on tape there. I'm still fighting the cold that's been going around. Not quite over it. Anyhow, I think we have a nice operational Model 4. I still haven't tried to boot it from an actual floppy. I ordered a uh, high-res card for it uh, out of the, from the guy in Australia. It'd get here in the next couple of weeks, and we'll go through installing that. And I have an M3 uh, system expander. So in an upcoming video on the Model 4, I'm going to install a high-res graphics card. I've ordered one from the uh, gentleman in Australia, uh, and I've got an M3 uh, system expander coming from Peter Bartlett at Bartlett Labs, which will give me hard drive emulation and Ethernet port and all those things. And we'll be adding that on as well and giving it a play. So anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this up to this point, and we'll call this good. Bye.